So a recording artist asked me the price on an exclusive. Um, I quoted him actually half of what I normally ask. I was feeling um, really generous. He said it was out of his price range. All right, producers, we have a lot to talk about, and I am podcasting all by myself the day after my birthday. It's a sad existence, but someone has to live it. So I had a consultation an hour ago with a singer who leased beats online, and she was asking me a lot of questions about intellectual property, content ID, etc., and problems with beat leasing problems you wanted to anticipate there's a lot of fear associated with rappers uh buying beats leasing beats i understand that uh, producers have tons of fear too and a lot of us paralyze ourselves from moving forward because of these these fears that we are anticipating even though they haven't really affected us yet so that was a that was a good conversation uh, but something she brought up was she was afraid that this recording artist was afraid of buying exclusive beats from a producer because they were way too cheap and i looked at the prices they were way too cheap but you know it was interesting that when she saw those those cheap exclusive beats she doubted the legitimacy of that producer she thought there must have been some kind of catch something weird was going on and so that was a problem for her as a uh, as a potential customer another story now i just want to remind you i'm getting these inquiries and it should indicate to us that that beat leasing is not dead um a lot of it tends to be pretty inexpensive for artists but I think increasingly more artists these days want exclusive beats. So I've been sending out more unreleased beats to unsigned artists in case they want uh, to potentially purchase exclusive rights to, to beats that have not been made publicly available. They'd be the first ones to get them. Because there are a lot of artists who flat out refuse to lease beats. They want exclusives. So a recording artist asked me the price on an exclusive. Um, I quoted him actually half of what I normally ask. I was feeling um, really generous. He said it was out of his price range. I was like, hmm, my unlimited rights are $149.99 on my website. And this exclusive price I was asking for was not much more. So this isn't a story with a bad ending. I ended up just giving him a really crazy disc, a really generous discount on the unlimited rights. And, you know, it worked out. Everyone was happy. But it got me wondering, what do most artists expect to pay for exclusives? What are the expectations and, and why? And I actually didn't ask why. I, I went to Twitter which was my first mistake. I'm just kidding. I, I like going to Twitter uh, sometimes. And I asked uh, producers, what's your average price for an exclusive beat? Because I was, I was curious. Um, and I got some really interesting responses, some really interesting responses. I'm just going to share my screen because I think there's a lot to talk about. There, there's so much diversity in pricing out there. Um, one thing that I do have a problem with when we have these conversations is, is the fact that anyone can participate in these conversations. So you have, it's just like, think about Spotify, right? When we're talking about streams and and numbers and, and this and that, everyone has access to Spotify, right? Every artist pretty much has their music on Spotify. You could be the kid next door who uploaded their first song ever, and they're just excited to get five streams. But guess who else is also on that platform? Same user base, same exact platform. Drake, Taylor Swift. There's such a discrepancy between 
various artists who who are using the same platforms and that's that's kind of what i feel um is happening with these conversations because there are people who you know when we're talking about finances we're talking about the business of music we're not talking about musicality we're not talking about creativity we're talking about the business of music there are a lot of people who love to express their opinions in ways that appear to be based on experience based on good information when in reality a lot of the people expressing these strong opinions with confidence have not really experienced what they've spoken about and when it comes to business there are a lot of people who don't make music for a living don't make beats for a living who are giving advice giving giving pretty strong statements and I feel like this is a pretty strong statement. You know, this guy says he wants a couch and a spare room to crash in, a night or two to hang out, good food, weed, and some drinks. I'll be goddamned if you're going to pay me in alcohol to make a, a beat for you or, like, some sleeping on your couch like a second-class fucking citizen just to, to, to produce your album. But this that's this guy's choice. And he admits that, you know, he has a day job. He does he says he can do whatever he wants. Cool. I, I'm I'm not saying I'm mad at him for expressing his opinion. I I I I, I don't like what he's saying, but what concerns me is that, you know, hopefully people aren't seeing this and thinking, Yeah, yeah, you're right, man. You know, if I if I invest 10 years of my life learning how to make beats the first rapper that offers me a bottle of wine and a, and a dust covered couch is is going to get all of my time energy and attention and loyalty and it's just like man trust me i've i've made those mistakes so so you don't have to anyway um th i thought this was really interesting this guy says a hundred dollars for an independent sometimes lower so let's say maybe it's 80 $80 for an exclusive beat, but his pricing for labels starts at 10000 and goes up from there. Now, do I believe that he's necessarily sold beats to a label? I, I personally don't believe it, but I, I think the gap is wide and that's what's interesting. So I wanted to challenge that and just, you know, ask him why there's such a wide gap. Um, and oh yeah, there, there goes DJ Cass. He wants to know. He says because the big labels can afford it, and I'm always willing to negotiate. But given how cut and dry a lot of the responses from these labels have been, even before I name my price, just cut straight to the business with me. So, this is another reason why I think something else is going on because, like, producers please don't be communicating with labels about pricing or negotiations. I am not going to be emailing back and forth with an Atlantic A&R to talk about my, my fees. That's a manager's job. That's a lawyer's job. Please don't do that. Please guys. Um, it's just a, it's don't do it. Uh, there's some interesting Oh, this was actually really weird and toxic. So, so um, she's a singer. She says, "I'll pay at most forty ish for an exclusive." So, I could, that's, guess that could be like forty one, eighty eight, forty three, fifteen, forty two, ninety nine. Maybe that's the ceiling. Um, as good a songwriter, if I can find a good beat, I can turn anything into magic. Well, it's a good beat. So if someone's charging ridiculous, I don't see the point when I can just make, when I can make just as good song for less and get a better ROI. I agree with that. I mean, I, I think if you can, you know, quality isn't always dependent on price when it comes to beats. Um, and I was, but I'm curious because if she's saying I won't spend more more than $40 on a beat, that's a very specific number. So I wanted to see um, a link to her streams um, with the with the highest ROI, and she 
I don't like when people use that kind of language with me. Like, I don't know you, but then it just got <clears throat> really weird. And she told me to leave her alone and then proceeded to tweet me like 20 more times. <laughs> I didn't say anything. <laughs> There's some really interesting people on the internet. Let me let me see if I can find it. Because I, I blocked her because I was uncomfortable. Um... Like, you can see, these are the only three, four tweets I ever sent her, and, like, none of them were mean. <laughs> and she just kept tweeting me, go away, leave me alone. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Any, anyone who kind of latches on to, to a total stranger on social media just makes me uncomfortable. But um, I've seen this a lot. Um, some people say you know they they don't want money up front when dealing with a label which i also disagree with because why we've talked about advances before i had a video where i went through my major label agreements and explained you know poorly but the idea of recoupment and how that works um, I don't think any lawyer would encourage somebody to refuse taking money up front in exchange for, I guess, higher royalties. Because when you're taking money up front, you're, you should be getting royalties anyway. And a lot of people try to frame the conversation as a binary. Like, you either get money up front or you get back end. It's like, no, nah, you get both that's how that's just kind of normal how things go that's just i don't want to say standard but it's standard a lot of people don't like when people use the word industry the term industry standard this is interesting i i don't think i got a reply um this guy said he only charges 30 dollars for his exclusive beats because people are too focused on money nowadays so when you consider what this would mean like let's say you make the beat in an hour and let's say then you go through you know the uploading process the mixing process all of that so it ends up being like about two hours start to finish you're making fifteen dollars an hour um which isn't exactly minimum wage but it's it's pretty it's pretty low to give exclusivity to something um and and then this person replies i'd feel bad if i only spent 30 dollars on the exclusive rights to to a beat that was kind of like the artist i was talking to earlier today where she was skeptical of i'll just say the price it was 25 dollars for an exclusive beat and she's like what's the catch there's got to be a catch so i i think um this person says 15,000. The thing is, you never know. Maybe people are charging this much per beat. I, I don't know. I, I think um, I, I'm not here to tell you what to charge for beats, but I'll tell you I'll tell you my approach. You didn't ask for my advice, but you're watching my podcast. So when it comes to beat leasing, if you have no information, if you have not been selling beats for a while, and you don't have experience with it, you don't have data, you don't have any sort of input from customers. You know, like if you're just starting, you don't know what pricing structures have worked for you because you just don't have a history of doing it. Just go with the with the defaults of the platform. You know, those those are there for a reason. They're not there to, to trip you up. They're there because that appears to be the most helpful starting point for mo most uh, beat makers who are selling. Now, exclusives are different. There's a lot of leeway there. Um, in the course I'm the beat selling course I'm developing, I want to get really detailed into this. Uh, but in a nutshell, it really comes down to the individual to an extent 
But also we have to consider our financial situations, which in the case of the vast majority of producers who are just starting out, you know, just I'm thinking of myself, just quitting your jobs to, to pursue music full time. Your financial situation isn't great. Uh, if you just won the lottery and you're like, fuck it, I'm quitting all my jobs to make beats. You're an exception. All right. I, I don't want to hear about these, these, these crazy exceptions in the comments. What if you're an alien and you have a gold ray gun that just you pull the trigger and gold appears then you could sell your beats for a dollar yeah i know i know everyone's a, a an alien with a gold producing ray gun thank you for your insight so with exclusives well i'll put it this way right so when i pursued music full time i did so because the job that I got offered to me seemed low. So I got a, I got a job offer for 35,000 a year. People ask me when I felt like I had kind of made it as a producer. And to me it was when I hit 35,000 of income off of music because a legitimate traditional job would have paid me that amount, but I went out and got it off of off of beats. So I was like, oh wait, that that kind of validates my crazy dream of being a career producer. So considering that moment, when it comes to exclusive beats, I, I would break it down like this. So let's pull out the calculator. Let's say, oh, my big ass head's in the way. Let's say that currently at your job, you're making a thousand a week, right? And you want to make at least that amount off of beats before you can quit your job. So what's a thousand divided by seven, right? You need to make $143 a day, right? So... How many exclusive beats do you think you can sell in a, in, in a week? One, two, three? I mean, three seems reasonable if your prices are reasonable. So if your goal is to make a thousand in a week, let's divide that by three. Maybe you're selling exclusive beats for 300. And then once you've made, you know, three sales a week, you're at 900. You just need a hundred dollars more. Maybe you sell four leases at 25 each and you've hit that $100 mark. Break it down into these, the, these uh, weekly sales goals. Because that's what a lot of companies do. Um, you know, that, that's kind of like the soul-sucking capitalistic stuff. But unfortunately, these numbers are going to matter for us as producers who are trying to survive and eat and pay bills and live in a house or, or some kind of habitation that is safe, there's nothing wrong with wanting that. Just because you make beats doesn't mean you have to suffer. Um, I, I would suggest using your own life and your own needs, your own financial needs, as a, as a good reference point for how you're selling beats. I mean, it it might be unreasonable if you like some people come out the gate and they're like, I want to make 10,000 a week selling beats. So all my my exclusives are going to cost, you know, 5,000. That's a little unrealistic. What are you making right now? What do you need to live? Cuz you know, say say you're only making 800 a week, right? You only need to make 114, well, let's call it $115 a day. You might be able to do that off of leases. And you might think, you know what? I'm only going to charge $150 per beat. Because if I sell an exclusive one day, I've hit my quota for the day. And then I can supplement. I'm, I'm actually ahead of myself. So the following day, you know, if, if I'm trying to make 115 but I made 150 the following day, I'm already up 35. So I just need to make whatever is left. 
I can do that other ways. Maybe I'm selling mixing services. Maybe I lease a couple tracks. Maybe I sell another exclusive and now I'm up 70 for the following day. So there are a lot of ways to break this down. But once you get to the point where you're hitting that 800 mark a week consistently, realistically, how much more work do you have to do to double that? And that's where things get interesting, because now you're thinking of scaling up. Maybe it involves investing more in advertising. You're taking a temporary loss. Maybe it involves doing things you haven't even done before, like a lot of producers don't utilize email marketing. A lot of producers don't even have an email list. A lot of producers don't have a MailChimp or AWeber account. Maybe you want to get into SMS marketing. You've tried everything else. It's a natural expansion. Maybe you haven't uploaded to certain platforms. You haven't tried Audio Mac yet. You haven't tried um, Sound Better or Off Top yet. You want to expand. Maybe you just want to double down on what you're already doing because it's working. But you're like, you know what? I'm going to make... I'm uploading four beats a week. I'm going to upload... Six, see what happens. You turn that 800 into a thousand. You're like, well, wait a minute. I'm going to upload eight beats a week now. See what happens. Maybe you increase your prices by just a little bit because even a $5 increase can matter a lot to you. It can make a big difference to you, but not so much to the consumer. If you're breaking these numbers down, on a daily, weekly, monthly quota basis, every dollar is going to count. And I think a lot of us are focused on these big price tags. You know, I 10,000 a beat. I need to make a million off of this. Great long-term goals. Don't don't I'm not saying kill your ambitions. I'm not saying don't be bold. Don't demand a lot from yourself and from this world that you're building for yourself. But I'm saying break it down and make it less intimidating for you. And when it comes to exclusive beats, because these prices are entirely, one, negotiable, and two, just made up. I mean, it, we're making this stuff up because it, it it's based on perceived value, how the, how the customer perceives the value of our beats and how we perceive it. We just have to meet in the middle. Because of that, there's so much flexibility. You saw that guy saying he might charge 80 for an exclusive for an indie, but 10,000 for a label. Yeah, I'm going to challenge him because in my brain, that doesn't make sense. That's too wide of a gap. Like, what's really going on there? But the reality of it is, you can, on paper, sell a, an exclusive beat for a million dollars no one's gonna buy it but we have all the flexibility in the world it's just infinite possibilities it's getting a little abstract here let me bring myself back <laughs> back to earth um, and just say you know be realistic be flexible be open but don't sell beats for prices that don't f sit right with you and if Something's not sitting right with you. If you're, you're one of these producers who's like, eh, I just can't sell a beat for under a thousand. And it's like, well, if an independent artist doesn't have a thousand, many of them don't, but they have 500, you're going to say no to that? If so, why? You might have a good reason. You also might have a terrible reason. An example, in my opinion, not trying to offend anyone. An example of a terrible reason would be, well, I read somewhere Timberland gets 50000 per beat. Okay. I see that comment a lot. For doesn't, doesn't mean... Never mind. We're not going to go there. Just, just let's challenge our notions of what are products are worth what our music is worth i think challenging ourselves challenging whatever notions we have whatever perspectives we have in our head all the time is a good thing 
because the second you you kind of become fossilized in your thinking uh, you know you know what they say dinosaurs are dead but there are there are fossils of them so don't fossilize your thinking without good reason just challenge yourself a little ask yourself why and when we're talking about exclusive beats this is a this is kind of a, a made up number but if you can make it real then you have more reason to stick to that number if you can make it real based on your expenses based on how you're living now and where you're trying to go financially you have a much more logical basis for naming a price and you might be surprised when you evaluate your own financial needs and you say damn you know what i really only need to make because listen if we're breaking it down day by day some people might think oh my god some people might think making six figures selling beats online is so crazy if we break that down by what you have to make in a day to get there two hundred and seventy four dollars a day so maybe you sell your exclusive beats for two hundred and seventy four dollars because if you can do that every day you're making six figures i'm just saying when you break the numbers down hopefully they become less intimidating and for for the people who are like well shit, i would just i'd kill to make 50. all right guess what that means you only have to make 137 dollars a day it becomes less intimidating uh i hope that helped this is a podcast so i'm not really editing this and making it clean and pretty and, and under 10 minutes long and i talk a lot weaver beats is right i don't shut the fuck up so and i talk slowly so shout out to the people who enjoy my solo podcast i like having aaron and dame on here uh because they keep me on task and i will certainly be including more guests shout out to all the people that are willing to come up here and, and, and talk with me much success to you appreciate all the birthday wishes peace